Hey guys, Mars Thinking here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so the EZA for Int Ultra Instinct Goku is coming to global with the official release of the Part 2 anniversary stuff. And uh, there are a few changes, a couple of units that weren't available on JP at the time. So I thought I would do a new version of this video. Plus the old one, like it's harder to find, obviously buried deep in the channel for global players that are looking for some tips. So as always with my team building guides, we are going to go over my top picks as well as some honourable mentions. And if there's any units that you think I missed or should have talked about more, then go ahead and let me know down below in the comments section. So in UI Goku is a standard 30 stage EZA. The weakness category is Rapid Growth which is STR Kefla's category. She is featured on Vegeta's banner, so if your summons have been anything like mine, uh, no Vegeta but plenty of Kefla's pulled, then that will be a good place to start. So standard 30 stage EZA means no stunning past stage 5, no attack lowering past stage 15, and no ceiling past stage 20. Uh, once you get to stage 13, uh, AGL and tech types are the units that will get an 80% damage reduction. So you can still use extreme, you can use super, and obviously you want to be aiming for STR, int, and physical. Not to say that there aren't one or two units that are AGL or tech that could be useful, but they're just not going to really deal any damage. So then it's straightforward, everything past stage 30 gives you Hercule statues. Uh, obviously you're going to get all of the medals to EZA in UI Goku, a whole bunch of int orbs, uh, 11 int type Kai's, 30 stones and then obviously there's missions as well as long as you do stage 20 or higher with at least one character from rapid growth which is, I mean, I, it's not impossible but I, I feel like there's no way anyone out there beats the EZA without using at least one rapid growth character so you should get extra 4 stones for that, all in all fairly straightforward. So. Rapid Growth uh, is, like I say, Kefla's category. Uh, it's not the biggest category in the world. And as you can see, there are quite a few AGL and tech types. All of the LRs are AGL. So they're all going to suffer from that damage reduction. Uh, but let us go ahead, straight away, jump in and look at the top picks and the uh, honourable mentions. If you find the guide helpful, smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let us jump straight in. So... First of all, every single EZA that is against a pure Saiyan or a universe survival saga uh, enemy, if I don't mention Tech Khalifla, someone will mention it in the comments. So I'm going to put it right at the start this time. Uh, Tech Khalifla obviously is going to be very, very good for this event. She's not going to do any damage, even though she is actually on the rapid growth category because she's a tech unit. I mean, I guess she'll do some damage before stage 13, but then she gets the 80% damage reduction. But yeah, it's the fact that she has a 100% chance to dodge. And because she is a Khalifa unit, she does actually share some links with a bunch of the other Universe 6 girls who you might actually bring on the team. So compared to some of the other EZAs, where you might just bring her, put her in front of all the attacks, but then she doesn't really do much for the rotation, she is actually going to link up with some of the other units that you're going to use in this one. So she's definitely like the top pick. After you've selected your leader, you should then be selecting Tech Khalifa if you have her. So, whoa, whoa, hey. So uh, I know you guys are probably enjoying the video right now, but uh, Pickles, the true boss, and let's be fair, real star of the channel has informed me that a crazy almost 60 percent of you guys watching the videos at the moment are not subscribed to the channel so if you just want to go ahead give that big red subscribe button a little it will be much appreciated now back to the action moving on to the leader obviously we have str kefla um, she is a unit that I would say is underrated, whilst at the same time clarifying that I don't think that she's a great unit. I think she's pretty good. She can be fun to use sometimes. She's inconsistent because you need the six or more key spheres to get her 50% chance to dodge. And if you don't get that, then obviously she has 100% defense, which isn't terrible. Uh, but in harder content, you definitely notice that it's not quite enough. Um, now, obviously, on turn three, she'll transform into Super Saiyan. For most of the earlier stages, that's probably as far as you'll get. But once you get closer to stage 30, and if you do choose to go on from there, um, she does transform again on the next turn. So, obviously, for her, it's going to be turn five. She becomes Super Saiyan 2. She has the chance to dodge built into her passive then. And now six orbs gives her an additional 
guaranteed super. It's not like a normal that can become a super. Six orbs gives you a guaranteed super attack. So she can be pretty good. Obviously in the later stages and if you go past stage 30, the Super Saiyan 2 is probably going to be like the one shot. Um, she also has an active skill where she can change a bunch of orbs to STR, which obviously helps to get those six orbs for the additional super. And you can activate that when there is a pure Saiyan or universe survival target enemy. So obviously in this event, you're going to be able to activate that straight away. So if you get to turn four, she transforms to Super Saiyan 2, just use her active skill straight away. She gets attacks of effective against all types as well. So she's going to do even more damage against the in UI Goku. And then that's probably going to be the final turn of the EZA. So next up, we have the physical transforming Vegeta. Now, the reason why I've included him on the list is because he is probably the next best leader if you do not have Kefla. Because he's physical, he's in the category, so he fits perfectly. His leader skill is pure Saiyans or super class, which is basically every unit that you're going to bring. It's every unit that we cover in this uh, video. There are no extreme type units that I go over in this video. Because the only one, like the only two that even have the right typing is the int hit and the STR hit. And uh, they are not particularly good, so... <laughs> Physical Vegeta is definitely the best next stand-in leader. He's not super great, but he'll definitely be able to hold his own. Probably just going to be like an off-rotation float that you've only brought for the leader skill. But he's going to be your next best bet for leader if you do not have Kefla. So next up, I thought I'd include Gohan here. So obviously Gohan is tech, but he's very, very good defensively. It doesn't matter that UI Goku is in because he guards. Uh, after one super attack, his defense is going to be nice and high, so he's going to be able to tank really, really well. He's not going to do damage past stage 13 because of the 80% damage reduction, but he can also be a decent fill-in leader because there are a lot of hybrid Saiyans on this particular category that can be very good because obviously all of the fusion like Gotenks and stuff are all on hybrid Saiyans. You might not be able to make a full hybrid Saiyans team out of the top pick units, but if you have to use one or two like suboptimal hybrid Saiyans. Uh, that's obviously going to be the next best thing if you don't have Kefla or the physical Vegeta. So otherwise, I wouldn't say it's worth bringing him on the team if you're already using like Kefla or Vegeta because he's on the category, but he's really only going to be good defensively. I mean, if you're missing that final option, he can be good defensively as the sixth person on the team, but he's definitely not a top pick if you have a better leader. So moving into the actual units, this right here is the big boy. This is the ace up the sleeve for global. This is the secret global weapon. JP did not have this EZA when the UI Goku EZA dropped on their, their anniversary. So physical Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks is going to be the MVP offensively. Kind of like how Tech Khalifla is the MVP defensively. When I build my team, I will pick Kefla as the leader, I will put Tech Khalifla in there, and then I will put Physical Gotenks in there, because he's just that good, right? He has a 30% chance to dodge built in, which is pretty nice, and obviously post EZA, his attack is absolutely ridiculous for the 7 turns. So he's got dodge chance, a bunch of extra attack, a bunch of extra defense for 7 turns. The EZA, even if you go past stage 30, is probably never going to go for longer than 7 turns. So this guy is most likely going to be your highest damage dealer on the team by a considerable margin. So if you have him, you absolutely need to be bringing him in this event. He is going to absolutely destroy. I wouldn't be surprised if for at least the first 10 stages, he probably just one shots UI Goku if you're under the Kefla leader skill. So you need to bring this guy if you have him. So next up in the realm of Gotenks, we obviously have the Int transforming Gotenks. Turn 1 is the only turn where he's not super impressive, but he's still good. He gets an extra key, attack and defense 100% is okay, but he greatly raises defense on super, which is a 50% raise. So post super attack, he's going to tank everything apart from a super attack incredibly well. And then obviously on the next turn, he comes around, he transforms into Super Saiyan Gotenks. Now we can't stun in the stages of this EZA, but... The point is that he can do multiple additional super attacks. He has a chance to do an additional super built in. If you have any dupes or skill orbs, then obviously he could potentially super attack three times in one turn. Each of those super attacks is raising his defense by 50%. So if you get the triple super attack turn, he's pretty much untouchable. Like even in the higher stages, a super attack is not going to do a huge amount of damage to him if he has triple super. So he is definitely going to be an MVP on the team. Uh, the only thing with him is you're probably never going to see 
the Super Saiyan 3 transformation because that revolves you getting to like turn 7, which the easy A is probably never going to go that far. If you do go way past stage 30 and you somehow manage to get to the Super Saiyan 3 transformation, then it's just GG on that turn, basically. So, moving on, of course, we have one final Gotenks, the physical Seal Tanks, uh, Super OG unit. His easy A definitely made him a lot better. He's more viable for some of the more difficult content, but not really, like quite up there in terms of some of the top tier units for hard content um he gets 30 percent defense up to 120 with each super attack performed so obviously bear in mind on turn one if he hasn't attacked at all he's got no defense then after that first super he gets 30 percent uh, obviously if he additionals that's going to be super beneficial but he needs to super attack four times in order to have 120 percent defense which by today's standards even with his easy a stats at uh, maxed out his defense isn't going to be crazy but he's on the category he's physical so he's still going to be pretty good you just have to be careful in the early turns if he takes like a super attack or something but he will still be very useful and obviously he's a great link partner for the other Gotenkses and bridges the gap with the other units because he has like Super Saiyan, um, Saiyan lineage, Fierce Battle obviously so very good pick as well. Then next up we have Kid Goku. So Kid Goku is kind of a random one. Uh, he can be good for easy A's. The only problem is he doesn't link super well with units outside of like his specific team of like Dragon Ball Saga because he has like Incredible Adventure turtle school i mean innocence a lot of the gotex units and stuff have um but yeah he's not going to share a ton of links the thing that makes him good is obviously in an easy a where you can't heal um once you get to a turn where you are 59 percent or less hp he gets a guaranteed crit and then you also get to use his active skill which is an attack and because of his passive that will be a guaranteed crit as well so he can be good for doing some extra damage with the active skill and the fact that his passive guarantees crits on that turn, but his links kind of let him down a little bit. So he's more of an honorable mention than a top pick, I think. But he is an older unit. He hasn't been on a ton of banners, but if you've been playing the game for a while, you probably do have a copy of him. Next up, we'll start talking about some Universe 6 girls. So Kale, obviously, if you are going to run the Tech Khalifla, a great rotation is them two together. They share a ton of links, and then obviously fighting against a Universe Survival Saga or Pure Saiyan enemy, she's going to guard with Khalifla on rotation. She's going to get additional super attacks. Each one raises her attack and defense. So it's not going to take long for her to be able to tank really, really well. Obviously, Tech Khalifla is better because she just dodges everything. But it's not going to take very long until this Kale is just tanking everything for no damage as well. And her damage will be fairly decent because obviously she's raising attack and she's STR. Uh, so she's not getting that damage nerf and so she'll actually be able to do some solid damage. Now then we have the A the uh, Super Saiyan Khalifa, the STR one. The AGL one uh, post easy A is obviously pretty good but... You know, she's not going to do any damage. She doesn't have a guaranteed dodge, so she's not like a top pick for the team. Uh, this one is a good free-to-play option, and obviously if you do have the STR Kale, they can work really well as a rotation together as well. Um, obviously, she works best when there is a Kale on the same turn as her. She does raise defense on the super attack, so I mean, she can be pretty good. She's a solid free-to-play option. Uh, next up, we have the physical Kefla. This is definitely a unit that is long awaiting an easy A. Um, but she'll be pretty decent. Her defense isn't crazy, but she is a nuking type unit. All of her defense comes from her orb collection. So depending on how many orbs you get is obviously going to depend what her defense is going to be like. But she does have, uh, you know, type advantage. She has built-in chance to dodge. She has the built-in chance to additional super. So with dupes, uh, well, actually even without dupes because she's physical. So she gets the free level five additional. So even at 55%, she could super attack three times in one turn. She's an orb changer, which not only helps herself, but can help out other people on the rotation. And she's obviously going to share a ton of links with the others as well. So she's definitely a solid pick, even though she's probably one of the most outdated units out of the ones that we've gone over so far. So next up, we have the Int Free-to-Play Kale. She's a decent support unit to bring along if you are bringing a bunch of the Universe 6 girls because she provides Universe Survival Saga allies 2 key and 30% attack and defense. Uh, also, if there's a Khalifla on the team, she gets uh, extra defense. And then if Khalifla is on the same turn, 
Her support goes up to 3 key and 40% attack and defense in total. So that is actually really good. Plus, to be fair, actually, it's Universe Survival Saga allies for this part. But as long as you have a Khalifla on rotation, it's all allies key plus one attack and defense. So if you have like Khalifla in slot one, her in slot two, and then you had, say, you were running physical Vegeta floating in on slot three, he would be getting the key plus one and attack and defense 10%. So that's pretty good. Uh, next up, for a couple of honourable mentions here, we have the Int Gohan from the World Tournament. After his easy A, he's fairly decent. Uh, after Super Attack, he does have pretty good defence, but that's really all he's got going for him. He's kind of a... Uh, the reason why he's an honourable mention is because you pretty much just pick this guy. If you've put together your team, you've got your first five units, and then you just don't know who to pick for the sixth one. He can be a fairly solid unit. You're probably going to be using him off rotation because he needs to Super Attack first. But he does stack for six turns, so obviously if you get any additionals or you just, you know, super attack a couple of turns in a row, which would be pretty easy because his links are actually pretty decent and he gives himself key, uh, he is going to tank pretty well. So he's a solid pick for slot uh, six. And then we've got a couple of ultimate Gohans to talk about as honorable mention since they are in the category. The physical one is pretty good. He's got solid stats, and then the one once only if you drop to 79% or below HP, he gets a little bit of extra defense and a guaranteed crit. So he's going to be pretty good as the uh, slot 6 pick as well. That's why he's an honorable mention, not a top pick, but I still think he could be pretty good. We have the Int Ultimate Gohan. Um, personally, in a lot of situations, I do think the physical one is better, even though the Int one was kind of like the main banner one, and the other two were like the side ones. So he can still be pretty good. He's only got 40% defense, and he obviously doesn't have type advantage. So if he takes a super attack, he's going to take a lot of damage. But he will be able to put out a reasonable amount of damage. He doesn't share a ton of links with some of the other units, just because of the way Ultima Gohan link sets work. And that is obviously the same for this guy as well. But he does give himself key, which is very good. And then as another free-to-play option, there is the Int uh, Ultimate Gohan as well. He can be pretty decent. Like He raises attack on Super. He's got fairly decent stats. He can do an additional if there's another Goku family ally attacking in the same turn, which is going to vary depending on how you've built your team. Uh, and then he does give Goku family allies a little bit of support. I don't think that last part of his passive is going to be super useful because obviously if you're using units like Kefla, Khalifla, Gotenks, you know, you don't have any Goku family units. But again, he's a solid honorable mention for the slot six pick so there you go this one was a little bit longer but we went over most of the units that i think are going to be useful in detail like i said let me know down below if you think there's anyone i missed and let us know what your team build is going to be in the comment section down below so that is going to be it for the video guys this has been the master ningen smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new check out the links down below for the discord and the merch store and i will see you all again soon have a good one